when I read this chapter on laws, I say in my head that it's good. It's, it's good to know what the laws are. It's good to function within them. We tend to believe that the systems that are put in place by society are always just. They're always the betterment of humankind. And this is a naive belief because when you start doing some research into it, a lot of the people that have manipulated the laws aren't necessarily giving a shit about human nature in general. And that's because they were growing up different, they read different things, I don't know what it is. But we need to understand that though laws are essential, rules are essential for being in place, there are ways to exist within them that will allow us to be the most us that we can be. My name is Tarab. I make videos about emotional intelligence every day. My mission is to convince you to live the life that you want to live. This time I'm going to be talking about On Laws, a chapter in The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. It's my spiritual text. It guides me in the little moments of life. On Laws. Then a lawyer said, but what of laws, master? The context is Al Mustafa is leaving the city of Orphalese. He has observed the people. He has lived within the fabric of the city itself and believes genuinely in the spirit of humanity. So the people on his voyage outwards, he's, they ask him, hey, can you, can you give us a little bit of advice on how to lead our lives? And he answered, you delight in laying down laws, yet you delight more in breaking them. Like children playing by the ocean who build sand towers with consistency, then destroy them with laughter. But while you build your sand towers, the ocean brings more sand to the shore. And when you destroy them, the ocean laughs with you. Verily, the ocean laughs always with the innocent. But what of those to whom life is not an ocean? And man-made laws are not sand towers, but to whom life is a rock, and the law a chisel, with which they would carve it in their own likeness. What of the cripple who hates dancers? What of the ox who loves his yoke and deems the elk and the deer of the forest stray and vagrant things? What of the old serpent who cannot shed his skin and calls all others naked and shameless? And of him who comes early to the wedding feast and when overfed and tired goes his way saying that all feasts are violation and all feasters lawbreakers? What shall I say of these save that they too stand in the sunlight? but with their backs to the sun. They only see their shadows, and their shadows are their laws. And what is the sun to them but a caster of shadows? And what is it to acknowledge the laws but to stoop down and trace their shadows upon the earth? But you, who walk facing the sun, what images dawn on the earth can hold you? You who travel with the wind, what weather vain shall direct your course. What man's laws shall bind you if you break your yoke upon no man's prison door? And what laws shall you fear if you dance but stumble against no man's iron chains? And who is he that shall bring you to judgment if you tear off your garment yet leave it in no man's path? People of Orphalese, you can muffle the drum and you can loosen the strings of the lyre, but who shall command the skylark not to sing. What man's laws shall bind you if you break your yoke upon no man's prison door? What laws shall you fear if you dance but stumble against no man's iron chains? And who is he that shall bring you to judgment if you tear off your garment yet leave it in no man's path? He's saying be free, but don't do it at the expense of others. Don't do it at the expense of their their worldview, their self-belief, their difficulties. Don't flaunt your shit in people's face. Because then you'll truly be free. Because you're not, you're not stifling anyone else. Difficult to do in the pursuit of trying to manage and this and that and having a vision, sure. But I think uh, there was a quote in uh, Living and Dying with Grace, Councils of Hazrat Ali, where he said, it's better than to take some than to leave a lot. And I think a lot of times when I read these types of books, not every single little thing is going to be incorporated every single little time. But at least having it in my subconscious will allow me to hopefully live a more graceful life. You delight in laying down laws. This is, this is probably my favorite part of this 
um, because it, it, it gives that childful, childish exuberance about life. That life can get difficult and we get, we get kind of pigeonholed into believing certain things. But the reality is we're going to be the most happy if our child selves are happy. If the things that made us happy when we were little are being taken care of as adults. So it talks about sandcastles. It, it talks about the, I imagine this picture of this child making a sandcastle and really working quite hard at it and making it look beautiful, find the parents are helping, whatever. But with the knowledge, the child is making the sandcastle with the knowledge that this thing will tumble, hopefully wisely, that this thing will fall with time. Or at least the parents are helping in that sense. And so they're creating this thing that is beautiful in the moment and that is necessary in the moment but that necessarily will erode with time and being very comfortable with that. And it says, verily the ocean will always laugh with the innocent. Do you consider yourself innocent? In some ways I consider myself innocent. In other ways, I suppose I'm a culprit. And I think it's very important to make the most out of the little things make the most out of our disagreements with, with the status quo. Because I think a lot of us are just looking for freedom in life, to be able to do the things that we want to do, and, and to hopefully uphold our responsibilities to our families and to our the people that we love. So I think, I think it's important to have a bit of humor with the status quo of society, and a little bit of childish exuberance with very strict things that are put in place not in the sense you know that you should be committing crimes for well do whatever the hell you want honestly i don't, I don't you know it doesn't affect me but not in the sense that don't do the main thing he's saying is don't do things at the expense of other people like be free laugh with the ocean but don't be kicking over other people's sandcastles in the process of making yours and that's why i hate bullying and i and i hate i hate friend groups there's like super pet peeves of mine where where people are constantly picking at each other is the way that people dress or the way that people look or their identity. You know, it's, I feel like there's certain universal laws on how to, how to associate with other human beings, treat them with dignity, to actually care how they feel. And I feel like as long as we maintain this in everything that we do, it's going to be hard to claim that we're not innocent in, in, the, in the most spiritual sense. Now, I observe people like Jeff Bezos, or particularly Elon Musk, I've heard, treats his, his uh, close board and people with a lot of strictness. And he says that in business, you must, there's, there's just numbers, like you have to be number oriented and feelings and emotions shouldn't come into it. And he's someone that I aspire to be like, so necessarily, I have to find wisdom in those words as best I can. But my intuition tells me there is a better way to lead. My intuition tells me that if we treat people with respect and we value the laws of, of nature in the sense that, okay, fine, don't take up my space, but I'm not here to take up yours. Or my purpose of growing is not to take up your space. If that happens as a, as a, as a byproduct, then so be it, and we can talk about it. But I have to assume that the cultures that we build in our companies, the cultures that we build in our families and all of this should align with, with at least some of the teachings and perhaps some moral texts. When I read this chapter on laws, I say in my head that it's good. It's, it's good to know what the laws are. It's good to function within them. But in the quiet moments, in the moments where you know or your intuition is telling you something about how to proceed and you have the respect, the self-respect to actually hear it, Go about it in a, in a creative sense. Go about it with a little bit of childful exuberance. It'll make life a little bit easier to handle. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, There's a chapter on laws by Khalil Gibran in his book, The Prophet. Would highly recommend anyone that's looking for a little bit of peace in their life, a little bit of guidance in, um, in the grand scheme of things, to pick up this book as a bedside kind of, or a toilet book. <laughs> whatever works for you. And please let me know what you think. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. I make these videos every day. 
like it, share it with someone that, that, that's a particularly poetic individual or likes to be soulful. And if you have a second, check out this video. It's the last one that I made on Philo Gibran's book here. It was on crime and punishment. One of my favorite chapters. It really, um, it really establishes the baseline for what it means to be human, which is really cool in such a short, short little chapter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Actualize your potential catalyst. This will be you. Take care.